Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my second installment of the Ride or Die tag. That one was created by Jaclyn Hill and I did that one yesterday and you can go check that out if you would like to, shameless plug. And today I am doing what I am calling the Ride or Die Makeup Brushes tag. So, <sighs> makeup brushes are my absolute favorite in the makeup category like I cannot just pass on a beautiful makeup brush like if I see one and it's amazing it has to come home with me <laughs> I have a problem when it comes to brushes I absolutely adore them so I do spend a little bit of money on my brushes I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that ahead of time but it's not to say that like something like real techniques which I do have a few of those aren't good because they are but they're just not my personal favorites so anywho i'm just gonna jump right into this and it seems only fitting that i start off with my absolute favorite brush of all time and i have two of them the tom ford number five bronzer brush yes ma'am softest brush i have ever felt and that's not to say that there isn't a softer brush out there because Obviously, I haven't had the time in my life to, you know, be able to touch every brush in this world. But if this isn't brush porn, I don't know what is. Like, I don't know what is. So I use this for two things. I have two of them. I cleaned this one so you guys didn't have to look at a dirty brush or else it would look like this one. So I use that one to do my bronzer and it puts it on. It's like you're using feathers to buff bronzer on your face and it's heavenly and sometimes you'll end up with more bronzer than you need because it just feels so nice. So clearly I needed to have a second one. This one I use for my setting powder. So foundation and then setting your powder. Favorite brush of all time. But I do want to check out like Hakuhodu and stuff like that but I haven't had a chance to but Tom Ford number five Yes, I had a check. <laughs> Favorite brush. This one, if I had a reason to have two of these, I would have two of these. This is the La Mer V Powder Brush. And this one is synthetic and it's more of like a dome shape, whereas that one's like wide. And it's so soft as well. Like it's really, really soft. And I use this to buff at the end of my makeup routine. So after I have everything done, I take powder and I go like this over my face and this one does it flawlessly it is so soft another powder brush and this one is great for people that have mature skin because it's not going to put on as much powder so if you want to use powder without it looking like you have powder on this is a great one this is the mac 135 natural hair more of like a paddle shape and it's a lot less dense so this one will put on powder very softly. I like to use this when I want to have less of an application of bronzer or if I really just really want to dust powder on. I do not want a lot. This is perfect for it. Another Tom Ford brush. I will tell you like Tom Ford is is grabbing my heart right now. Like I feel like I need a lot of their brushes. Right now it is on my list. Like if I pass the Tom Ford counter I'm going home with the brushes like guaranteed. So this is the Tom Ford number six cheek brush. It is ridiculously soft, absolutely ridiculously soft. So this is what I use for blush, but I have two that I use for blush. This one I use if the blush is more pigmented, maybe a little bit more powdery, so that I don't pick up as much because it's so soft that it doesn't hold on to the pigment the same way that my next one does. And I will just buff this right on my skin. Now, if the blush is a little bit more stiff, like those Kat Von D split ones that everybody hated that I didn't have an issue with, this brush picked up product from that pan, but it is a little bit more scratchy. I don't find it to bother my face because I press on, I don't go straight in and buff. And this is the MAC 129 and this is a natural hair blush. Brush, <laughs> blush, brush, bleh, bleh. So this is a great one. I use it all the time. I've used it for years. Next one is this Wayne Goss number two. 
This is a natural hair brush. I love his powder brushes. I think they are really soft as well. This one I like to use to set underneath my eyes sometimes, or if I could get oily and I need to add a little bit more powder after I blot it, I will take this one because I can get it more precise and dust it on and it's not scratchy. It is so soft. I want the holiday brush as well, but I haven't gotten that one yet. So another Wayne Goss is the number three. And technically this is an eye brush. Like you would use this for like transition shade or blending things out or a very soft wash of color on the eye. However, I use this brush for my highlight. I think it does it so well without it like getting highlight from here to here. I like it for it can get really precise or go on the side and get a little thicker. I love this one. Now I'm gonna talk about this brush and I apologize, but it is my ride or die. It is limited edition, but I have substitutes that I'm going to tell you about. So this is the MAC 139. It is a dual fiber brush. So it has natural hairs and synthetic. This is a little bit more domed. That's why I like it more than the ones I'm gonna talk about. And it's a little softer. So what I use this for is blending out the edges of my blush or bronzer so that I don't have a harsh line. I also use this with some of my blushes that are so pigmented and more powdery than even my Tom Ford can handle so that I can really just get it on the tips of this and dust it off. Now for the ones that you can actually buy, MAC 187 works really well. Still, it's both synthetic and natural hair, but this one's really good too. But this is all synthetic, but the texture of the, what they're mimicking as natural hair is different than the synthetic at the top. And it's got a really nice shape to it. This is from Real Techniques and it came in a bundle. I think it was like $13 for the bundle though. So it's really great. And this is a dual fiber face brush. So just some options for you. My last face brush is another new acquaintance, but I have used it every day since I got it. So it's ride or die. And this is the Artiste Oval 7. And people ask me all the time what the difference between the MAC one and this. The MAC one is a lot smaller and this has more of a flat uh, surface here and the MAC one is more domed. So it's just gonna be personal preference, but I do like how this is flat and how much area it covers. It does not soak up a bunch of my product. It puts a seamless finish and it goes really fast. This is a great brush. I've got three blendy brushes to talk about, and now my camera is going berserk saying that it is going to die on me, so here's to hoping that I don't have to film this for the sixth time. Um, the very first one is my favorite of all of them, and it is the newest to my collection. I don't even think I have talked about this yet. I will talk about it in my haul for sure. <laughs> this is the Tom Ford number 13. It is like the 221, but fatter. This one's from MAC. This one I love for the crease. It's more densely packed than like a 224 or anything like that. And it puts it on so softly, but you actually get a little bit of color out of it. This one, the 221 from MAC, both of these are natural hair. This one I love because you can buff underneath the lash line. You can get product really specifically placed on this outer corner without bringing the product up. So it's not so big and fluffy that it just puts it everywhere. You can get a very precise blend with this one. MAC 217, you guys see me use this all the time. This is great for transition, great for the crease. It's just a great brush. It is a blendy, I keep calling it blendy. It's a blending brush from MAC. It is goat hair and I've got a ton of these. These last forever. The biggest thing you wanna make sure to you're doing when you're washing your brushes is that they're face down and you never get water up here, wring it out, flat to dry. You never want water to get up there and loosen your glue. This one is from Sephora and I actually have a few that I wanna try from Sephora, but I just haven't gotten the chance to yet or I'm just too busy buying a Tom Ford brush, let's be honest. And this is the Sephora Pro Tapered Crease. So this one is a little bit more tapered than what like the Tom Ford one is, but just as dense almost. <laughs> I feel like the Tom Ford one's a little bit more. But you can get into the crease with this one, blend and all that. I think this one's synthetic. I'm not sure, but I feel like the Sephora ones are synthetic. But I've been using this one for years and I really like it. I've got three packing brushes. I'm gonna try and beat this clock here. The 252 is from MAC. It is a larger synthetic packing brush. I use this one a lot to go from brow art all the way down to set my soft ochre paint pot. It's just really great because it lays down the product instead of like not absorbing it. It's 
a synthetic, so it lays down product a little bit more densely. So it's kind of the difference between these two. This is a Mac 242, which is the baby to the 252, and this is a 239. Synthetic and natural hair. This one I use with pressed pigments, with loose pigments, anything that has a shine to it so that it lays down the product and it doesn't stay in your brush. This with Fix Plus will make anything pop. The 239 I like to use more with like matte shadows and I like to be able to take the shadow and kind of blend it into the crease but kind of precisely. This is more dense. It will pack on but not the same way that the 242 does. If I'm using any kind of pigment or anything with shine I always use the 242 or anything that's going to get all over the place because sometimes natural hairs can kind of flick and they will get fallout. You guys, I use this every single time I do my eyeshadow, every time. This is the NARS number 44, and this is a contour brush. I'm trying to make sure I have the right number. This is a contour brush. I call it a pencil brush. I don't know why, it's probably because that's how I use it, but because it doesn't have a super precise tip on it, you can blend underneath the eyes without getting fallout underneath your face, and it just does it a lot a lot quicker, a lot easier, and it's a lot softer. I love this brush. And it's the contour brush, and it's a natural hair. Two angled brushes that I use for completely different reasons. This is the 263. This is a little bit more flexible. It is a synthetic hair, but I love to use this to do a cut crease because it's a little bit more fluid-like. It doesn't end up kind of jagging around and getting stuck because it's too stiff. And then I also like to use this when I'm doing a winged liner with a shadow because like I said, it's just more smooth and it's really great for the brows. Synthetic hair. This one is synthetic as well. This is the NARS number 47 angled brush and this is the only one that I swear by for my gel fluid lines for winged liner. It gets it every single time. It is my favorite I have ever used for that. Just two more brushes and I'm still going strong. <laughs> this one is the MAC 209. It's like the 210 but bigger. I like this to just run a fluid line right across the lash line. It's not too thin and it's not too thick. It's flipping perfect, but no good for winged liner. And it's synthetic as well. And this one is my MAC 316. This is a lip brush. Every time I do my lips, I use this. I don't like to use liners. I don't know why, but I don't like to. I like it to be like one color all over. So I use this, kind of get it on its side and create a line and just get it really precisely around the edges. And you can take this, top comes off, and you can go like that to store it in your purse. So. That's it. Those are all my favorite brushes. I am beating the clock so far and I'm going to go ahead and jump off before that is ruined. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!